All right, so we have the uh, cover cleaned up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a new strainer. In order to put it on, we're going to put on a bit of oil on both the strainer and the cover just to help seal it. So it's a bit hard to do with gloves, but just get some on there. And then if you're curious, um, the place that the oil actually goes through is through this hole in the corner here and then out from the side there. I mean, you can also just take the strainer Actually, just dip it in the oil. Actually, let me see. Does this entire thing fit? Okay, so it does. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out. I hope I don't lose that in there. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And now, you should be able to put it on to the cover. I'm gonna push it down and make sure that it's firmly in place. It shouldn't fall out. All right, so now we're gonna put the strainer back. Just look at the mile of difference between the new one and the old one. So we're just going to snug fit it with the Milwaukee. So let's just put it on. You literally cannot mess up the positioning of this cover. So. Let's get the bottom one on, and now the top one. Alright, so at this point, uh, installation is basically the same as removal, but in reverse. I should also... Alright. So now we have the cover back on. So now we're gonna put the tensioner mount back on. Uh, when you're putting this back on, keep in mind that there is a, I'm trying to blow that. There's a nut that goes on the back of the tensioner pulley where it's supposed to be. Just make sure that you don't lose that uh, because as you may recall, when we were taking it out, there was a bolt, uh, a nut that fell out and we didn't know what it did. It goes right here. So we're going to, this back on and then we're going to align it so first off I'm going to use the center bolt right here okay it looks like we have it aligned actually it might help us to it's already on it might have helped us to uh, put the nut first but you know there we'll just deal with it it's not like this can be misaligned, right? Okay. As you can see, we put on all the bolts and we're tight. And now we're just tightening everything. Uh, the torque for specifications for the uh, tensioner mount is 16 foot pounds. So we've already done the back bolt. And you can see that the center bolt is torqued 16 foot pounds. And the 90, oh, this one's down here. And the front bolt is also torqued 16 foot pounds. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the tensioner. So this is the orientation of the tensioner. This cap is facing upwards and this nut is kind of short. And what we're going to do is because we know that there's a bolt in the back, uh, what I meant to say is that there's a nut behind the tensioner pulley that keeps falling down. Uh, make sure that that nut is in place and as you tighten the bolt, you'll see that the nut shouldn't be able to fall out. So now we're going to keep tightening it. All right, now the tricky thing about this is now, I don't know if... Okay, I was gonna say that, I don't know if the nut is gonna be able to spin or not, but it looks like we're golden. 
All right, so as you saw, our Milwaukee got stuck while we were trying to, to uh, screw this in. Now, word to the wise, this torque specification is supposed to be 41 foot-pounds for the center bolt right here for the pulley. But when you think about it, because this is the tensioner, when we when we pull it back to put the certain serpentine uh, belt back on, it's going to torque itself. So we don't have to worry about it right now. Instead, what we're going to worry about is putting the uh, power steering pump back on. This one is pretty easy. We just <laughs> realign it. So that means that this uh, this screw right here should go to this bolt. I mean, this bolt right here should go to this hole. It's also a uh, powerful lesson, or maybe not powerful, but a powerful lesson on how you should always think about <laughs> what you're doing before you actually do it. I'm bound to make the same mistake over and over again, though. Okay, so we got that one in. And this one goes on the bottom. Okay. All right, so hopefully this one doesn't get stuck, but we know that's not gonna get stuck. I'm just going to tighten the bottom one first, just to make sure. Okay, and now for the top one. Sorry, I'm getting in your way. And the torque specification for those are also 16 foot pounds. Okay. Okay, so that one's torqued to 16 foot pounds. This one. Oh, there we go. All right, so now it's a matter of putting the hose back into place. Make sure we don't lose this bolt right here. I'm gonna get my Milwaukee and put tighten that. All right. So this one is probably just a snug fit, especially since it's nothing important. And now all that's left is to all right, so we have the belt put on. Uh, all I have to do is pull the tensioner back and then readjust it. Um, word to the wise, uh, a, a piece of advice is that when you're doing this, don't completely remove the serpentine belt because you're gonna have to just have to put on everything back again if you're gonna go that way. And if you, instead, you should just tuck it off to the side. So also, the last thing we should do is take this tank and then just slide it into its notch. All right, so it looks like everything's done. testing the system while the engine is on. It seems that everything is supposed to be fine. It looks like the serpentine belt is running correctly, so it looks like we set that up correctly. And I can't see it clearly, but I don't think there's any leaks. So I think we're good. So I'm my mom, and today I showed you how to remove and replace the VTC gasket and strainer for 2004 a 2007 Honda Ford. In this case, we have a 2400. Please tell me. The purpose of this entire journey that we've had here, you can see that we started in daytime, and right now it's nighttime, was actually to solve a error code that we got. It was P2646, which means that there's some issue with the uh, oil pressure or something 
that has to do with oil. Eventually, we should be able to see that replacing this has solved it, but if we don't, that's gonna be a nightmare, which we'll get to later. But we've also done a video, as I said before, on replacing the backside VTC solenoid uh, strainer and gasket, so go check out that video. But for now, I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. I'm Ayman. <laughs> Yeah, please like, please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on i9 Mon, especially, like I said before, all the videos I've worked on in the Honda Accord, and maybe even the Honda Civic, and I'll see you there. As you can see right now, I'm stumbling over my words because it is cold, and we are the smartest people in the world, so we decided to do this while snowing, but everything's done now, so I think we're okay. So I'll see you then, signing out. Peace.